been able to check in with uh, players physically after after last night, like how guys were feeling about going into the sprints. Yes, I have. Like, how, how's every, like, is everybody expected to go? Or um, he has it right now, yes. Yeah. How, how did Kawhi feel coming out of that game? Well, he's just still dealing with the information and the swelling, you know, so we're monitoring. He got treatment last night, he got treatment this morning, get treatment again tonight, uh, tonight you know, so um, we'll just see, like, right now he's questionable going to game four. Will he do anything today? Uh, yeah, I think so. No contact, just like. No. How, how does that affect you during the course of the game when you see he's not what he normally is? So you have to be prepared to put somebody else in the game or trust him that he can at least get it done? Um, I think just doing what's you know right by him. So just talking to the medical staff throughout the course of the game, talking to him, seeing how he's feeling, and um, just kind of go from there. You know, so you know. Um, he, he can monitor his own body, you know, he's grown, and he tells how he's feeling, but sometimes you got to protect the player from themselves, and so um, that's what my mindset is. With yeah. I don't to have the same way. I know you were hopeful that the minutes would go up in that game. Did you know going into the game that he was going to be around 25, or was that yes, something sir, that kind of transpired? Okay. So when he says that, you know, it's either limited minutes or don't play at all, how do you determine which is the best, you know, you said do right yeah. by him, but you yeah. do right by the team, too. Yeah, and I think, you know, with us, like I said, organization-wise and, and, you know, medical-wise, we've shown that we're going to make sure we do what's best for the player, you know, so sometimes you have to check it for yourself, and, you know, like I said, if he's hurting, he can't go, then he just can't go, but we haven't got to that point yet. What's the message to the team? You want it down 2-1, you're here again, so what did you tell the guys? Make some shots. One, two, move bodies and move the ball, make quick decisions. You know, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was once I went back and watched it. You know, but the 19 turnovers really hurt us. You know, 19 turnovers with 29 points against a good team. You know, that's just too much. You know, so we got to be better with that. And then, um, you know, we got to make some shots. You know, we got to make some shots. Um, we had plays where we could have made, you know, the interior pass is going to be tough because of bringing four or five guys. So we got to understand and train our mind that it's going to be the spray out for the three or put it back down the floor and drive it again. So that's what we got to train our mind to do. I think they had one lot. I got to move them around a little bit more, you know, off catch and shoots, off pin downs. You know, they're really loading up on them. They're not leaving. He's one of the guys that when penetration's happening, they're staying at home, you know. So just moving them around a little bit more and coming off screens and doing some different things like that. I think I think ball trouble. I can't do that. <laughs> talk, talk, uh, Paul talked last night a little bit about the, the, the fouls, you know, the, the little chippy fouls. Oh, I don't get into that. No, I mean, when you watch the game, do you see like it could be, some of these calls could go either way? I don't even know. Yeah, okay. yeah. I think they have one lob dunk in games one and two, and then, of course, the, all the ones they had last night. What happened? Um, you know, I think they got a couple, two from Luca, but they had ten at halftime, and it came off the penetration. You know, we were over committing to the closeouts and letting guys drive by us and now we're stepping up and then that's when Gaffer and Lively at their best, you know, at the limb playing that dunker space and so um, we just gotta do a better job controlling the basketball in closeout situations, understanding who we want to run off the line and who we want to make shots and get in the contest. How do you protect James? Um, just from a, a minute standpoint or ball well, minute yeah, standpoint? We protect James by PG not getting in foul trouble. You know, that you know, with Kawhi being on the restriction he was on and PG picking up those fouls, you know, we had to get James back in the game. So we talked about that after the game. Like it's a trickle down effect, you know, when PG picks up fouls, now James has to play more minutes, now he's getting worn down. So we just gotta just make sure, like I said, PG's doing a great job of not fouling and make sure we keep him on the floor. Do you think Kawhi can shoot threes in this, in this series? Kenny, what? Do you think Kawhi can shoot threes in this series? <laughs> yeah, I hope so. I, I, I've been waiting to see it. Like, he didn't even get an attempt up yesterday. Yeah, he can. Yeah, he can. Will he have restricted minutes restricted tomorrow? Um, that's still be, to be determined. Yeah, to be determined. You know, it's always going to be a restriction. It's always going to be making sure we do right by him, you know, until he's, you know, 100%. You know, so um, right now, we'll just see how he feels going into it. So I don't want to ask you to reveal any game plan adjustments or things like that going in next game. <laughs> but uh, when they're kind of funneling the ball to Russ in the corner and he's taking those corner threes and they're not falling, what do you think is the best counter to that? Is it him cutting? Is it him attacking the open space off the catch? Is it getting yeah, him on think, the ball? I think um, it all depends on the shot clock. There was a couple possessions where he caught it before on the shot clock and Russ has shown he can make that corner three. But when it's you know, 18, 17 on the clock, he can drive it and make a play because he's a great passer and he's good at getting to the rim and getting to the free throw line. So if they're not falling, just attack and make another play for somebody else. What, if anything, have you said to guys about composure? Just knowing that it's... 
got under your skin a little bit in game yeah. three. We talked so about it last night. Tried to after the game. Yeah, we talked about it after the game last night. Um, keep your composure, and the best way to you know set them up is play better and, and, and play the right way. So we'll be okay. Not being a problem solver. Yeah, I mean, I'm not enjoying the you know for what you know Kawhi's going through. You know, but. Um, you know, he put in so much work to get to this point in the season, not being 100%. You know, it's tough on him, it's tough on our team. Um, so I do feel bad for him, but, you know, PG's been a part of this. Like, teams are going to try to take him out, you know. He's one of our best players, and so, um, you know, but he's on final level, he's going to be okay. You know, it's just it's game three, uh, game one, I think he had 22 points. You know, game two, he had 22 points. And so we just got to, you know, get him more shots, get him to be more aggressive. And that's on me. Y'all have a good day. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you, Hey, stop it, man. <laughs> Let's get ready for Hoop Jab.